Thank you very much, choir. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad to see you. Everybody stood up today, stayed up, standing, so that's good. And we're here to worship and praise the God who gives us all of our strength. So please join me in the call to worship. Jesus Christ came to the fishermen when the prophet John was taken away. Grant us courage to cast aside the nets that bind us so we can follow you into true freedom and newness of life. Help us to be faithful disciples that we might inspire others to follow in your ways. Now we'll join in singing hymn 348, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling.
I invite you to welcome one another to this morning's service. Good morning. <laughs> okay, I think I made it. Well, I didn't quite make it to the choir, but I will get them in a minute. Well, anyway, it's just good to see you this morning, and it's good to have a little moisture, and maybe there's more on the way, and we will, we will pray for that. And uh, let's see, a few announcements. Uh, we do have a youth group today, and uh, let's see, it's Monday, we'll have our Monday night Bible study. Tuesday, we'll have our Tuesday morning Bible study. Uh, let's see, Thursday, I do have to, to uh, take somebody to Salina. Saturday, we had the men's breakfast. Notice this Saturday, not last Saturday, so mark that on your calendar. Invite the men to come. Next Sunday, uh, let's see. I don't think we have anything special going on next Sunday. The following, oh, yes, we do. <laughs> yes, next Sunday, we do have the <laughs> right, to, right to Life uh, dinner is going to be here. Ruth can use some help. Make sure getting all that gets ready. And it's next Sunday, not this Sunday, like somebody thought it was. <laughs> and uh, so do you need any specific help or anything with anything? Okay, okay. <laughs> and then the uh, following Sunday, the bells are going to play. And then the 11th of February, I think it is, the cherubs are going to sing for us. And so we do have those things coming up. And then right after that, then will be Ash Wednesday. So I think those are the main things. We, if you haven't picked up a, a church directory yet, we do have those out there. I noticed at the early service this morning, somebody picked one up, and I'd forgotten to tell them about them. So, <laughs> Okay, does anybody have anything else going on? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. The cherubs uh, practice on Wednesday afternoons. Ruth is in charge of getting the snacks and stuff. She needs some help, people willing to help with that. But this particular Wednesday, she can't be there, so she needs someone to get them. Oh, we got a volunteer right there. You got beat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other announcements then? Hey, what are you standing there for? <laughs> Say, Pastor, come forward because the children are waiting for you. 
Can you say that? Okay, children, tell the pastor to come forward because you're ready for him. <laughs> Do you hear that? He said I was silly. <laughs> Well, good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Well, good. I was just wondering, what is your favorite thing to do? Uh, sledding. Sledding? Ooh, I think that is a lot of fun. And guess what? If it snows, we might get to do that, huh? Yeah. Anybody else? What's your favorite thing to do? Be lazy. Hey, my kind of man. Good job. <laughs> We're going to have to change, though. Do you know that? If the whole world was lazy, we couldn't get anything done. You're probably right. Yeah, I'm probably right. <laughs> so we're, we'll work on changing, won't we? <laughs> okay, what else? What's somebody else's favorite things to do? What? Eat. 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 <laughs> That's a good thing to do. Anybody else have any favorite things? Play with your friends? Read books? Do schoolwork? <laughs> I didn't think so. But let's say, he named sledding. Let's say all of us like sledding and we're busy sledding. And all of a sudden, somebody comes up and they say, Stop what you're doing and go to church. Go to Sunday school. Stop sledding and go to Sunday school. Do you think you would do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? That's a good answer. I don't know. What did you say? No. No, you wouldn't. You know, a lot of times when it is our favorite thing to do, we wouldn't stop it, even if it was Jesus calling us. But today's scripture talks about Jesus going along the the lake there and he saw people fishing and he said come and follow me they were throwing their nets out and they stopped and they went to him and then they went by another boat and two guys were in there repairing their nets with their dad and with the other people who work for their company and Jesus said come and follow me and you know what they did they didn't say no they dropped their nets and they went and followed Jesus because Jesus says, now is the time that I need you to come to church. I need you to come to Sunday school. You can go sledding some other time. <laughs> and so, but you know what? When we are doing something we really like, it's tough to do that. Now, if you were in the middle of doing your homework and somebody says, come and do this, you would stop it, wouldn't you? Well, Jesus wants us to think that, guess what? And there's nothing more important than doing things for him. And so if we're fishing or if we're sledding or if we're eating our favorite dessert, and Jesus says, I want you to go and take care of somebody who is really sad and who doesn't know me, then he wants us to go and do that. And so that's what I want you to think about. Think about putting Jesus first. It's not easy because the world is always saying sledding's more fun right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so would you please join me in an echo prayer dear god. oh boy somebody's leading it for me dear god <laughs> thank you for jesus christ who calls us to be your servants sometimes it's a, it's inconvenient because we're doing what we really like but Jesus knows it's important for us to serve you. Help us love others. Help us forgive others. And help us be a good example. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, maybe... Fishing isn't your favorite thing, but if it was the way you worked, you wouldn't want to wouldn't, wouldn't stop and 
and go help Jesus, but, but Jesus' followers did. So I hope you remember that. We have some fish bait for you this morning, some worms, but actually I think they're gummy worms. So you can get, you can get two packages of them and then go back to your seat. And don't forget your sister. No. Take some for your sister. Okie dokie. <laughs> okay, it's time now to share God's word with you, and we'll turn to our in our hymnals first this this morning. Uh, what did I do with all that? All that was up. Well, anyway, it's uh, Psalm uh, sixty-two. No, oh. what? 787, okay. I had it marked in here one time, but, okay, Psalm 62, 787. We're doing verses 5 through 12. For God alone my soul waits in silence. God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this. Power belongs to God. And now we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. And Paul uh, continues to give that urgent message that it's, you know, people need now is the time. You need to change your lives. You need to be ready for, for Jesus and the things that you thought were important, like your relationship with your, your spouse and your children and different things like that. Those things aren't the most important thing. The most important thing is getting things right with God. And so in these three short verses here, 29 through 31, that's what he's telling us. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 29 through 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they have none, and those who mourn be as though they have not, were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present time of this world is passing away. And now we invite the ushers to come forward as we worship and praise God by giving him our gifts.
please join me in prayer. Almighty and loving God, you truly bless us with many, many gifts, and we give to show you that we really appreciate what you've given to us. We know that in your hands, these gifts can spread the message of your love to those that are in need. Please bring hope, bring comfort, bring resilience, and bring strength. And then let this world be a better place in which to live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, 365, Jesus, God's grace is much greater than our sin. So 365, grace greater than our sin. seated and it's time for us to share our joys and concerns so what joys do we bring with us today our choir sounded great this morning <laughs> what other joys early group said hey we had a little moisture we're supposed to get more <laughs> and hopefully we can be safe in it Okay, anybody have birthdays or anniversaries? Well, we had a really, really good uh, pastor's conference in Kearney for three days. Uh, learned a lot about the importance of uh, giving and, and how to take care of the gifts that God has given us. And then I got to see my daughter Erin and uh, 
uh, Tim, my son-in-law, and my grandson, Graham, and have a good time with them, and so that was really good. And They are struggling in lots, lots of ways, losing, losing a son and losing uh, Tim lost his dad, and so my, my grandson's kind of having a tough time, so keep them in your prayers, but it was good to spend some time with them. So, uh, how about uh, the rest of you? Any other? Um, uh, fifth and sixth grade boys basketball team to Idalia yesterday, and our boys did really well. Well, good. They beat Burlington. They lost to Lutheran, but um, we should be proud of the, the boys we have in this district. Okay, good, good. Not only were they good basketball players, but we won some state championships. Oh, good. I was proud of them off the court. Well, good. And guess what? We're proud of parents like you that, that help, help mold and shape them. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Other joys. Well, I know there's lots of love in this place. I mean, just, you know, like next week we're, we're hosting the Right to Life Banquet. And, you know, it takes a, lot, takes a lot of work to do that. And I'll mention that later on. But anyway... You know, it's nice to have people that are willing, willing to go the extra mile and do things so that we can make this a better world. So, okay, any other joys? Okay, let's see. I don't have my little slip of paper with me, but uh, Dr. Delano's stepdaughter uh, does have a brain tuner, and so we have her in our prayers. Uh, Anita Miller called this morning, and her brother Dwayne passed away this morning. And so I don't know when the service is, but we wanted to keep him in our prayers. Uh, let's see. Uh, who else? Oh, uh, uh, Cindy Wiley's uh, son's, son's wife, Randy, uh, is, was 23 weeks along. And uh, I, I don't know exactly what the problem was with her pregnancy, but they, she is in the hospital, I think, in Topeka. And I think she's going to have to stay there. They were hoping to get at least 24 weeks, uh, and then if after that, if they had to deliver the baby, they could, but they're hoping to get even more, and so she's going to be bed rest uh, for a while, so do keep, keep uh, Randy in your prayers. And uh, let's see, uh, I don't know where he went, but uh, uh, Jean Ann uh, started her chemo, so we want to keep her in our prayers. Any news on that? Okay, well, but keep her in your prayers, so. Okay, and somebody else started to say something? No. Yes. Uh, my brother Bill just got diagnosed with cancer. So, uh, okay, yes, okay. His, Tom's brother Bill just got diagnosed with cancer, and so we'll keep him in our prayers. And Pat's uh, mother's, or be your aunt, right, from Binkelman, she passed away, and so we want to keep Pat in our prayers as well. Okay, any, any other concerns? Yes? Well, just worrying about how all over the country so many people are having flu and there are a lot of people who are dying from it. Yeah. Just yeah. Keep in our prayers. Yeah, we got, we got the flu going around. Our government couldn't, our leaders of our government couldn't get together to, <laughs> to, to make sure that all our bills were paid and all the needs were met. So we need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for the whole world. A lot of trouble going on. And, uh, you know, like she said, with all this flu and illness, and uh, I know a lot of our own uh, hospitals and nursing homes are closed uh, because of the, the threat there. So, yep, we've got a lot of praying to do for. Yes, sir. What in California? Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that family in, in California, that's a sad thing. And it just oh, makes you wonder what's going on with the world. And that's why it is important that now is the time that we respond to God and should his, spread his message in any way that we can. And so, and continue, keep praying. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to take some time for silent prayer where we talk and listen to God. We'll follow it up with a pastoral prayer, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. So join me in prayer.
Almighty God, as we gather in this place of worship, we're thankful that we do have the opportunity to come to be near you, to be uplifted by you, to be challenged by you, to change our lives, to take responsibility in doing our part and spreading the good news and helping make this a better world. We need to stay committed to the promise that we made when we joined the church, when we said that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. And so we need to give our best, put our best foot forward to do our part in turning this world around. And there's a reason for turning it around, because you, you do keep your promises. You promise to love us, and we know that. You promise to provide for us, and you've given us wonderful gifts. And you provide us, promise to forgive us, and we can experience that every day because we know that we are sinners, that we are self-centered and world-centered, and yet you continue to pour out your love to us. And so help us to do a better job of responding and doing the things you want us to do. We thank you so much for the many blessings that we've experienced, for our wonderful community, for the children, for our choir, for all of those who step forward and, and do the, the, the extra that make this a better world. For the youth who are learning how to not only to play basketball, but to be good citizens. For the, the parents and, and loved ones in our community who go that extra mile to help. For those who help by taking on the extra responsibilities about for raising funds for our, our, major, our good projects, our worthy projects. And for those who visit and go out of their way to, to make people feel loved. So thank you. We also come with concern. We pray for the leaders of our country, the leaders of our world. Help them to put aside the personal things that they seem to care the most about. About getting reelected and things like that. And do what they can to make this a better place. We also pray for, for moisture. But at the same time, we want people to be safe. So help people to use a good judgment and, and to be, be careful. But we do come with, with concerns for individual, individuals that, that are close on our hearts. We lift up those who have lost loved ones. We especially pray for, for Pat and the loss of her aunt. We pray for Pat Delano's stepdaughter and who's facing the challenges of, of brain tumor. We pray for Anita, who's lost her brother. Just comfort her and those others in a time of loss. We also lift up those who are, who are struggling with, with issues in their life, like with, with flu, with disease, with problems of growing older. We ask that you help them. We pray for Jean Ann, who is going through cancer treatments. We know there are others also, and be with them and help them to be able to find the strength and the courage to be able to, to face each day and to know that you're there and that there is, is hope. We lift up Randy, and she's got uh, quite a long way ahead of her before the, her child is born, and we just hope that, that you'll be there and things will go well for them as, also. Now just... Bless us, open our ears to your word, help us to accept the challenges and to respond in the way that you would want us to respond. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ and together we unite our voices as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to share with you two scriptures this morning. The first one I want to share with you is from uh, Jonah. Just a short little, short little book with four chapters. And we're reading from chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Uh, Jonah, of course, was uh, chosen by God to take a message to the Ninevites. And these would be the Assyrians, the Nine uh, Nineveh's the, uh, the city where they live in. And, of course, we know that Jonah thinks that they're our enemies. And 
God is powerful. If he says that if people change and he'll forgive them, then he will. And Jonah didn't think that they should, they should be forgiven. And so when God told him to go and give him this message, he decided that he wouldn't. And so he tried to run away, but you can't run away from God. God found him, put him in a whale, and of course we know what happened then. But finally then, in this scripture we're going to read to you, God said, listen, do what I tell you, and go to Nineveh. And so he did. Didn't do exactly what God told him, but he did respond. He still was, was upset, and, uh, but God can get amazing things done if we just half-heartedly do what he calls us to do. So uh, Jonah chapter 3, 1 through 5, and then verse, verse 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim my message to them. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. And he, Jonah cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Then we turn to Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. And like we've been telling you the last couple of weeks, Mark goes right into Jesus' ministry. He told us last week that John the Baptist was out preparing the way. Then he was arrested and put in jail. And now we have Jesus responding to that by immediately going out and, and calling disciples. So chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came up to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went along a little farther, and he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and they followed Jesus. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We never know exactly how we're going to respond to the bad news. Jesus received the bad news that his friend, the one who was preparing the way, John the Baptist, had been arrested and put in prison. And Jesus knew that that was bad news. But instead of completely losing it, mourning all of the time, and getting upset and mad with everything, Jesus said, the time is now. The time is near, and the word that is used there could also mean neither near or here, but whichever one, here and near. The time is now that God's message needs to be told to the people. For John the Baptist, the one who was preparing the people so that they could hear the message that God was providing through the Messiah, had been thrown into jail. No longer was there someone out there telling them, to repent from their sins, to ask for forgiveness, to turn their backs on the ways of the world, and to turn toward God. And so Jesus turned immediately to what he was sent here to do on earth, and that was to tell the people that the time is now we need to turn to God. And that message is true for everyone because we all get caught up in the world's ways. It doesn't matter if it's 200 years ago or 2,000 years ago. People were concentrating on the things that were important in their life. 
Today, we do the same thing. We get caught up and think we have to do the things that prepare us for the future. We have to do the things that make us feel good. Like Lucas said, eat, especially desserts and pies and cake and ice cream. And we need to go sledding <laughs> and do those things that are fun. That's what life is all about. We don't want to go to school. We don't want to do homework. We don't want to do those things that are hard to do. But that's what Jesus said. We need to turn away from the worldly things, from the tension on ourselves, and turn back toward God. Turn toward God. Give our lives over to him. And then we can have life the way that it should be. We can have peace. We'll know that our problems are taken care of because God is there with us and he's there for us. We won't be so concerned about our own individual things that we turn our back on lots of others, just like our Congress is doing. So concerned about getting reelected, making, making sure the Democrats look good, the Republicans look good, so we can't come together and make an agreement so we can do the things to keep our government operating, so we can provide for the needs of people who can't provide for themselves. Because there's lots of people out there in that world that are in that situation. There are a lot of people out there that need to see God in action. And that's what Jesus came to do, to turn people's conception about God completely around. God was not just for the Jewish people, like they had thought for many, many years, like Jonah thought when he was told by God several centuries before the time of Jesus to go to Nineveh and tell those people that I've decided I'm going to destroy them if they don't quit their evil ways and begin to care about other people. And of course, we are self-centered. Jonah, we can be mad at him, but we probably would have done the same thing. If one of, one of somebody did something bad to us and God, God says, go and tell them to change their life because I'm going to destroy them if they don't. And I know I would say, ah, they deserve it. They were mean to me. They didn't do the right thing. But God would say, guess what? You're not in control, Warren. I am. That's what he told Jonah. Jonah didn't like it. Jonah tried to turn his back on God and not do what he was told to do. But see, God persists. God wins out. And Jonah was told a second time, go to Nineveh and tell them they have 40 days or they will be destroyed. Jonah was supposed to go out through this whole city, he only traveled in a day's journey, but he did give that message. And the people heard it, they recognized that it was something they better respond to, and they did it. That's what's important, is that we give God the opportunity to reach out to people just so they can turn away from their Centerness on themselves, centerness on the world, centerness on the things that make them feel good. And who's going to do that? It begins with Jesus Christ. Jesus says, now is the time. God is near, God is here, and we have to turn away from the things that we think are important. We need to think about love. We need to think about forgiveness and caring. We need to think about going that extra mile and giving these little third graders a hope. We need to go that extra mile and take on those extra things like the world gives us. Ruth isn't sitting up there in her place. But Ruth, I worry about her because every time I need something done, who do I go and call? Ruth. <laughs> Ruth. As a family that had, had a motorcycle accident, we need to have a fundraiser so that the girls can go and see their dad in Denver. Okay, I'll do it. 
Oh, by the way, Ruth, the right to life is in January. They want to know if they can have a dinner at our church. Oh, yeah, Warren, I'll do it. Oh, Ruth, you want to be on our, on our wealth and wellness committee and help us with strengthening families? Oh, yes, I'll do it. And then her family says, oh, we need to get out of this two-story house, three-story house, and move where there's one level. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got time to do that. Ruth, we need help at the thrift store sometime on Saturday mornings and on other days when people can't get, oh, yeah, I'll do that. Ruth, well, I don't have anyone to be, in our, be our network leader. Would you go and do that? Oh, yes, I'll do that. Because why? Because the time is now. She knows that what, no matter what she thinks important, the time to reach out and to serve God is now. The needs are there. There are people all over, right here in St. Francis, who are turning their back on God, who know that they're doing the wrong thing, who want to do the right thing, but they continually ignore God. They continue to ignore others. They continually do things that hurt themselves and hurt others. And if we aren't there to show them God's love, to show them that we care, to show them that we're not going to judge like Jonah wanted to do, but to say, hey, God loves you. God wants you to have a better life. But you need to turn to God because that's the only place you're going to get the strength so that you can do it. And you can't wait till tomorrow. You can't put it off until the time is more convenient. The time is now. Now. That's what Jesus did. He went right away to Galilee and telling the God is near, the time is now. He went out and he found fishermen. Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, and they were throwing their nets in the sea, and he said, come and follow me. And I'm sure they didn't know who he was from Adam, but there was just something about him that told them that they had to drop their nets and they had to go and follow him because now is the time. And he went on a little bit farther along that same lake, and he found James and his brother John. They were in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. And Jesus said, immediately, come and follow me. And they left their father, they left the other workers behind, and they went and followed him. And we don't hear anything at all about those workers or about Zebedee complaining because they knew that what is important, the time is now, and we have to turn our attention to God and to do the things that God wants us to do. And so God has that same message for each one of us. Time is now. There's a need. Look around. There's lots of empty pews. See, last week was the 14th. The Sunday before that was the 7th. The Sunday before that was the 31st of December. The Sunday before that was December the 24th. And December the 24th, two services in the morning, two services at evening, we had over 300 people here because they wanted to come and know God. And guess what? I know they still do. And they're not bad people because they're not here this morning. But we all need to realize that now is the time. The only way the message of God is going to get spread to people, the only way they're going to see is love and action, is if we're the ones doing it. If we're the ones deciding, you know what? That basketball game on TV is not the most important thing. That NFL championships games today, that's not the most important thing. But what is the most important thing is what can I do to help God? What can I do so that my children know that Jesus should be the center of lives? What should I, can I do so that my neighbors will know that I want to really reach out and love them, to forgive them, to help them, even though it means giving up something of my own? The 
fishermen that Jesus called were willing to turn their backs on their livelihood because there was a livelihood that was more important, and that was the livelihood of all of God's creation. And God's calling us. Now is the time when we should be asking, God, what can I do? What, how, what can I say? How can I show people your love? How can I make this world a better place so that we're not continually turning our backs on those in need? We're not trying to judge first and then help, but we're responding because that's what you call us to do. Now is the time. Ask God, what is it that I can do to make this world the kind of world you want it to be? God's grace is greater than anything. Let's let his grace be the ruler of the world. And there'll be peace. Amen. A closing hymn is going to continue to emphasize that message. In order to do what God wants us to do, we have to trust and obey. It's 467. being ornery oh well keep your light no don't let your light go out because <laughs> now is the time for our lights to shine brighter and to bring hope to the world a lot of trouble out there and it's up to us to share his love right go and be at peace amen
Okay, yeah. Be careful. Be real careful. They've been trying to, to keep the ice off, but I'm sure there's something there.